Davison Figueredo, the UFC flyweight champion, defends his belt in a rematch against the gritty and versatile Brandon Moreno at UFC 263. Thus, it feels like an appropriate time to take a look at the style of a man to beat, and what better way to do that than to deconstruct one of his most entertaining fights to date, that against Alexandre Pantoja at UFC 240. For context's sake, there are both better and worse performances from Figueredo if you want to analyse him from the extreme perspectives. His fights against Benavidez were as immaculate as a Figueredo performance can get. Or alternatively, his shutout loss to Juicy F Omega demonstrated a plethora of his limitations. What the Pantoja fight brings to the table is a little bit of both. There's some gorgeous counter-striking, but there's also some dumbfounding strategic decisions. He's one of the best examples of the Figueredo playbook out there. So where did Figueredo have success in this bout? First and foremost, in his counter-striking. Figueredo's reputation seems to align him alongside the monster brawlers of the UFC, but a lot of his best work has often come as his opponent steps into range. See here, with his lead hand outstretched, he measures the distance and as Pantoja comes crashing in, Figueredo finds his counter right hook. Here, he slips the jab and lands his right hook as Pantoja looks for the straight. A counter jab punctuates the exchange. As the sequence continues, we see more and more counters. This is where Figueredo flourishes, in protracted exchanges where he's able to time his opponents as they look to push him back. It also allows him to land his rear hook more effectively. The big knockdown of the fight comes deep into the second round as Figueredo is stepping on the gas. A right hook swung from the waist cracks Pantoja as he is desperately trying to circle off and create space. Which brings us to the way that Figueredo throws strikes in the first place. The man is throwing directly from the hip. Many striking pundits lament the boxing technique of the modern mixed martial artist, even if they're a step above their predecessors. Figueredo is part of the reason why. The now flyweight champion engages in exchanges like this. His hands around his hips like he's reaching for a gun, which, I mean, he might as well be, given his firepower. I mean, obviously this can give Figueredo issues. He has to rely on pullbacks, slips and counter-strikes just to avoid shots. He can't really parry a jab away that easily. But it does offer some benefits. You can throw counter uppercuts with the intention of removing your opponent's head from their neck. Additionally, he can dig underhooks to defend takedowns a lot easier with the lowered guard. As this exchange demonstrates, it also allows him to throw up elbows like they're going out of fashion. By bringing them up from about as low as they can go, he can spam them to his heart's content and land them with some real pop. In this fight, Pantoja had no answer for the step in elbows, so Figueredo just kept throwing them. I mean, fuck it, if it works, it works. Regarding wrestling, this fight is a treat to watch for scrambling from both men. The first shot from Figueredo is a lightning fast double leg, used as a counter to Pantoja's jab. From there, Figueredo lands some decent shots from top, but for the most part, he's stifled by Pantoja, who goes from using butterfly hooks to create space, to threatening an omoplata to sweep, to inverting, to threatening up kicks, to finally standing up. It's a messy sequence, but it's damn fun. Or here, Pantoja shoots lazily after getting cut up in the clinch, and Figueredo sprawls to the front headlock. As he tries to take the back, Pantoja grabs an underhook and falls to his back. Figueredo starts throwing bombs from half guard, but he can't find a whole lot of success whilst Pantoja is using the knee shield. Finally, when Pantoja threatens X guard, Figueredo limp legs out and invites his opponent back to the feet. A lot of these exchanges demonstrate Figueredo's intention with his takedowns more generally. They are a means for damage. Position comes second, big ass elbows and stinging downward punches are the main motivations behind shooting. If he can hit a submission, then he might go for it, but in this fight, it's all about bringing the hurt. But well, what about when he's on his back? Pantoja shoots here in the second after being hurt earlier in the round, and he nails this gorgeous TJ Dillashaw, Chab Mendes style wraparound double leg. Figueredo immediately starts trying to create space with his knees, and by pushing down on Pantoja's head, Figueredo decides to post with his left hand and climb back to his feet. Shortly after that, he escapes the clinch on the fence. This commitment to constant scrambling means Figueredo very rarely accepts bottom position and will always look to return to the feet or to hit a sweep. Ultimately, what Figueredo brings to the table is confirmation that perfect fundamentals aren't always what's necessary to be the best. 
Figueredo has been tested against some genuinely very impressive fighters, but he's turned back the vast majority of them using his awkward style and stance. You don't have to possess the perfect technical form of a Jeff Neal, a Vicente Luque or an Adrian Yanez to make it to the top of this sport. If you can weaponize your weird, off-kilter timing and be aggressive in every facet of mixed martial arts, your technical deficiencies may not prove as significant as they would if you were more traditional and conservative in your approach. And that's part of what makes MMA so goddamn enjoyable to watch. Thanks for watching guys. Do you have an idea for a video? Then leave it in the comments. I read every single one and even though I do ignore 90% of them, I do consider every single suggestion. Thank you.